So in today's video, I am going to be sharing my favorite tips and techniques for painting white for animals. So white dogs, white cats. It is a tricky subject to capture because it is hard to know how much paint to apply to the paper in shadowed areas. A lot of the times I find that artists are afraid to go dark in areas. You would be surprised how much paint a white furred animal really does take. First, I want to talk about some colors. So what I find is that artists are afraid to apply color and get dark enough in paintings of white dogs because they're white. They think they need to be really light, that there isn't really much color, when in fact there is quite a bit of color that are around in white dogs. I want to first show you color mixing for white dogs. I just have a scrap piece of paper here. I'm using Arches 140 pound cold press paper. And here's my little palette of colors that I love to use for pet portraits. I explain more about this in a free masterclass that I have taught on pet portraits. I love to use the color Payne's Gray. Sometimes I'll use it in various uh, values where it's really, really dark to then really, really light where I just apply a lot more water. And then I also love to use mixes of yellow ochre and lighter browns. And then I also love to use mixes of browns and the Payne's Gray, which gives you that more of that neutral, muddy water color. So in this white long haired dog that I am painting here in this portrait, it's not finished yet. I wanna show you as I develop this dog, but what I've done is taken those light brown to grayish washes around the outside of the face in the shadow line area and as you can see, there's not much white of the paper that is still showing on my painting. And then once I am completely done with applying color, I'll go back through and add the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. So I will use some of these washes that I was showing in the demo here. The light Payne's Gray is what I'll need to start shaping the outer edge of the eye. So these are the type of washes that I'll be using to build up the color around the eye like this. And I just apply water and then blend it out. So it is pretty light. And then as that dries, I will just add a little bit more color. Then as my base layers dry, I take my paints gray and those different values and I'll start to overlay in areas that I want to be darker, so mixes of browns and that Payne's Gray. So I wanna show a little more hair texture right underneath the face because the light is hitting from the left side, so it's naturally going to get darker on the right side of the face. So this is an example of where you don't wanna be afraid to go darker than you think you will need to go. Work in lighter layers, it's definitely the safest way to, to work with watercolor. But this is where I find a lot of artists are afraid to paint darker on light white dogs, but this is what you really need to be able to do when you're painting more realistic looking pet portraiture. Should also know too that when we get to the final stages, when we add our bleed proof white highlights, that's really going to help brighten the dog back up again if you're afraid that you might have gotten too heavy with your paints. Don't worry, there is a little bit of ways that you can correct it at the end. So again, I'm just mixing different browns and light washes of brown and Payne's Gray throughout this dog to give it a natural feel, but I'm also leaving whites of the paper showing. So even in the whitest, brightest patches like above in the forehead area, I'm still showing the direction of those hairs. So hairs are kind of going up and around the forehead of the eyes. It shapes that way of the face. So you can see a three dimensional object. So here, for example, it definitely needs to get darker within this dog's body. This is really going to make the dog look more realistic. So I am mixing up a Payne's Gray and Brown 
so more of a neutral mixture. It's kind of a muddy color, but this is going to help us really pop that dog's face away from the body. Not every reference photo is going to be the greatest of quality, so it does help to have a lot of practice under your belt. So if you are interested in getting a lot more pet portrait practice, I have a brand new course that I just released at the end of last year that is called Master Watercolor Dog Breeds. And inside the course, it's 30 different breeds ranging from all different colored dogs, white, brown, black. If you are looking to get more guided practice, these videos are step-by-step. -step, and I know that it will give you a lot more confidence in your pet portrait skills. Okay, so at this point, I am getting farther along where I now need to add in the white highlights to really be able to see where I need to go darker or lighter. So I'm using the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. And I'm going to switch to a number one pointed round brush. And I just add a little bit of water to this paint to help uh, thin it out so it glides across the paper a little bit nicer. And this is going to make the dog look a lot more realistic. And I'm going to continue to do this same technique in other areas where there are darker patches, transitioning into a lighter area that is getting a lot more light. And I'm just going to transition that by simply painting over a few highlighted hairs so it makes it look more natural. This is also where I like to add some of this bleed proof white into the body to help bring out some highlights. If you have a really dark or darker wash in an area and you don't want it to be one flat color. If I find that I ever get my white just too much paint on the paper, I'll just take my finger and blot it and that helps to lighten it up. You could also use a sponge or a paper towel. So I really love the way this is coming together. It's really starting to show some nice white highlights in the hair of the ears and just really showing a nice overlap and making it look more realistic because now we have the shadow darks with the white highlights over top. So those are my techniques for painting a white fur hair animal, especially dogs and cats that um, you should not be afraid to apply color, especially where there needs to be dimension for shadows and highlights, because that is what will make your dog or cat look more realistic. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would love it if you could hit the like button because that helps me get this video into the views of more watercolor artists and to help them on their journey as well. If you have any questions about painting white uh, pets, I would love to help answer those. Please drop those in the comments below. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you know every week when a new video is live on my channel.